Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And we're looking at the budget. So remember that we do have a couple of free agents coming off the books, uh, especially some that we just signed one year deals to. But the big one here is Starlin Castro. And this is one of the reasons why I did kind of want to trade him because if you look at his free agent status, he's signed to be a free agent next season. So He's slated to come off of our books, and that's $7.8 million, the second highest on the team right now. Remember, we signed Domingo Santana to a long-term deal, and I actually signed him to that long-term deal because I figure that, you know, he's coming pretty cheap, $4.6 million for the next five years. That's all the way through his prime, so that's going to be a good deal for us. But then Starlin Castro, 7.8 coming off of the books, so he's definitely going to be one of the top free agents. I don't know if if we're gonna if we keep him past the trade deadline i don't know if we'll resign him in the offseason i guess we'll have to see who else is out there on the market but uh we probably will qualify him make that qualifying offer to him uh so we'll see uh and then looking at who else is coming off the books marco estrada he's the fourth highest paid on our team right now and uh he's i mean he's pretty good i, I like what he's doing this year so far three three and four but he's got a 118 whip with a 426 era which is pretty good um jt ramuto is going to arbitration uh let's see who else danny valencia we just signed um a lot of people are going into arbitration as well um brandon jury being one of them i do want to see some more from brandon jury he actually is hitting 235 uh he was hitting 260 a couple of i think a couple weeks ago he's hitting 260 so he dropped down a little bit but i do want to see some more from him but uh just showing you guys what our payroll is going to look like uh and trevor cahill does come off the books i can't wait to lose him I, I mean he was an okay signing he was kind of a guy to fill the roster and it just it's just not working out let's be honest it's just not working out so looking at the rest of our free agents here uh you can see that we're not paying these guys that much money so won't really hurt us too much so uh let's just look at a couple of trades you guys have been uh telling me to look at so let's look at some guys so adubre ramos is one of the guys that you guys wanted me to go after and let's just see what the phillies do want for him so look at this trade that they want justin Bohr, aquino and marco estrada i mean that's a lot to give up but it's interesting. I mean, they do want Justin Boer. I wonder if I can get Justin Boer out of the deal. Okay, so they just had another trade, and that one had Drew Steckenrider. So let me just look. Uh, so Marco Estrada, I think I saw another trade that came up that they might want. James Nelson, and I believe it was Aquino. So they're actually interested in these three. Ah, this is interesting because Aquino is a guy that you know I do like him a lot. Let's let's not get it wrong. I like him a lot, but does he have a future in the outfield, especially with Alvis Aguilar, Monty Harrison? I still want to keep on to keep a hold on, and uh, then also uh, Austin Dean we have coming up. I mean, we have some pretty good outfielding prospects, and especially with the draft coming up as well. We don't know if we're going to draft anybody there. And then Howard Armas is down the road, but he's still one of our top prospects. So this is an interesting trade. Let me know what you guys think about this trade right here. Um, if we do look at uh, Ramos, let's look at his ratings here. He's a pretty good young pitcher, 26. He's a relief pitcher at 81 overall. He's only going to get better. And we are trading three guys to our rivals uh, in our division. So uh, let me know what you guys think about this trade. I mean, we're not giving up too much, but we are kind of giving up a lot since, you know, we just did sign Marco Estrada and he's a guy in our in our rotation. But the kind of the ascension of Jose Arena this year might kind of offset it. So let me know what you guys think. So another guy you guys actually wanted me to look at was Chesler Cuthbert. And this guy's actually a free agent, 66 overall, 26. But if you look at his ratings, he's actually okay. He's pretty slow, though. I don't really like that speed. But, you know, this isn't a bad guy to have in your minor leagues. It's kind of like a backup option. Um, so I don't know if I will sign him right now. Um, he's definitely let's just look at our organization let's just see what we need um, in the infield because uh, we do have Brandon Drury who's going to be at the MLB right now I'm just going to start him at third base um, and kind of have 
uh danny valencia platooning like i said because he's hitting 217 i don't really like what i'm seeing from him right now so i might need actually a backup infielder and that might be the guy just because i don't want to use any uh service clock uh with some of these young guys so uh, actually john giavatella is going to start at second base and then starling cash is going to slide over a third so i kind of i kind of like him as kind of a backup um i don't know if i'll go after him right now or down the road we'll see if injuries come up but i just want to show you guys him let's look at another one now this is just to show you what it would take to get michael fulmer a potential young guy 26 i mean he's a beast but, I mean, look at what they want for him. They want Lewis Brinson, Bartolo Colon, and Real Muto. Let's just try this one more time to see who they want. Lewis Brinson, Taylor Ward, and Brandon Jury. That actually isn't bad. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to give up Lewis Brinson, though. Definitely not giving up on him. But this isn't a bad trade. I don't want to say this is a bad trade. Let me just see if I can maybe substitute Brinson out and see if they would take somebody else so they don't they wouldn't take alvis aguia i actually think i would i wouldn't mind doing that trade even though this was our top pick last year i maybe wouldn't mind it actually he is progressing pretty well maybe maybe i wouldn't do that um yeah he's progressing pretty well i don't think i would do that and plus he's 94 speed um he's got a bright future let me just see if they want lucas Ali. No, i mean they want probably a potential guy let's see if they want what well, if they want howard armis so no they probably want somebody that's higher rated and a potential and that's going to be lewis brinson uh let's see if they would take one of our top pitching prospects. So what do we trade? Ooh, so they want Trevor Rogers. So think about this trade. So they would want Trevor Rogers, who is a, a top 50 prospect. Remember, he's 21 years old. But we're getting Michael Fulmer, who, I mean, he's pretty much a beast going into arbitration this coming year. Um, and 86 overall, a potential this is interesting i mean should we make this deal let me know what you guys think taylor ward brandon jury and our top prospect in our whole organization right now trevor rogers who's actually i think he's number uh let's just check let's just look at his rate michael former's ratings one more time 262 era 118 whip uh let's just look to see uh where the where the tigers stand in the standings because if they're trying to get rid of him they must not be doing well so they're 26 and 30 right now and it looks like they need help everywhere the 30th in pitching 30th in power 30th in contact they are doing i mean they're pretty doing pretty bad so let's look at where uh he ranks in the top prospects here trevor rogers so he's 33 right now so he's actually progressing a lot slower than what i'd like um i definitely like braxton garrett a whole lot better right now because look at braxton garrett they both started out at the same overall and braxton garrett's already it's probably because of his morale but he's 70 overall and uh with with the morale boost he's 73 but trevor rogers is 69 overall so i don't know should we do this if we if we give him up we'd have to heavily depend on some of these other top pitching prospects and griffin caning canning and uh sandy alcantara but we're getting michael fulmer who will be a he'll be our ace i mean he'd be our ace right now sliding harleen garcia to the two and then maybe we could make that other trade and marco estrada would be gone we could have replaced him you never know um but let's look at one more guy so for the last trade we're looking at, looking at maybe we'll look at one quick one marcus stroman so if you look at his ratings He's not overpowering in anything, really. He's got good velocity, good break, good control, good clutch. But his hits per nine and strikeouts per nine, they're not really, like, elite at all. And his stats at all, they're not elite as well. 147 whip this year, 145 last year, 131 the year before that. I mean, not really overpowering. Never had a low ERA, but he's just a solid pitcher. But if you look at what they want for him, and the one reason why... I would consider him because he's going to be a free agent this year. So we're actually taking a chance on him. I mean, because we would need to sign him in the offseason. So let's look to see what they want. And they want Starlin Castro. I mean, Starlin Castro would be two years older, but he is four points higher. They do. I guess they want a second baseman. And in the second trade, they want Starlin Castro and Cahill. The first one, they want Austin Dean. And the third one, they're definitely not getting this one. Lucas Salee. I'm definitely... 
like I said, Lucas Ali is one of the most untradeable guys on our roster. Definitely not going to trade him. He's probably, I mean, he's going to be good, man. Look at those hitting ratings. He's going to be good. Um, I'm actually going to move him down to double A uh, just because I want to get some more looks at Jungho Kong as the full time third baseman at triple a but that's a trade to kind of you know ponder a little bit let me know if you guys think i should make that one i feel like i can get a little bit more out of starling castro if i trade him away but let me know so we're actually going to look at two small ones here actually this is a big one though carlos carrasco he is one of the best pitchers right now in baseball five and three 119 whip 277 era he would be our first 90 overall pitcher. He is 32, but you can't deny it. B potential 90 overall. I don't see any regression right now from him. He's not really regressing. So he would be at the top of our rotation. And look at this. They Look what they would want in a trade. They would want Starlin Castro, Austin Dean, and Trevor Cahill. This isn't bad. I mean, for a guy that's 90 overall, he's aging. The reason why they're so uh, easy to give him up is because he does have a high contract, $13.5 I don't think they really care about money, but he's going to be a free agent next year. So you see the year three, he's going to be free agent. So they are willing to make this deal right now, and we'd be taking on more money, but we'd be getting the arm in the bullpen and pretty, not in the bullpen, in our rotation, and pretty much, I mean, our rotation will look good with him in it. And I mean, let me know if you guys think I should make this deal. And I'm, I mean, honestly, this looks like a deal that I might want to make. I mean, he's good. Look at him. I mean, he's really, really good. I mean, let me know what you guys think. I mean, he's had a career rip whip of one, two, one. Let me know. I mean, let's just move over and let's just look at who I'm thinking of next. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the Dodgers here and the Dodgers actually have a couple of guys who are going to be free agents So all these guys are going to be free agents. So we're definitely taking a little bit of a risk here The first guy is Alex Wood and he is going to be a free agent 3.6 million But he has a he's posting a 114 whip and a 372 ERA. I mean Alex Wood is just a D He's just a good pitcher. I mean look at the last three years 16 and 3 in 2017 15 and 7 five and two this year he doesn't seem like he's uh showing any signs of decline right now he is going down in ratings i don't know why i mean he's 28 years old his morale is just okay and i think it's because he's expecting to be an ace he would be our ace he would definitely be our ace uh because he's a slightly better than holly garcia maybe he'd be second maybe he'd be second but i don't know i mean look what he's demanding in in the offseason 9.2 million uh, I mean, good luck getting that from a lot of teams. I don't know if they will pay him that, but let's just see what the Dodgers want. So they want Dave Scalfani, Justin Bourne, Aquino. I'm definitely not willing to do that. Let's see if they want another one. See, I can't give up Bartolo Colon Jr. He's already 75 overall with B potential. I mean, I don't think any of these trades make sense for us. They're not really giving us anything uh, worth it right now, but we can obviously, you know, uh, start negotiating. Let's look at Yasiel Puig. So Yasiel Puig is interesting. He's a strong armed outfielder. We all know about Puig and his antics and everything he does, but he's actually having a down year hitting 207 and last year he had 253. So he's, he's kind of been going down a little bit. I mean, if you look at him, his ratings are pretty good. I mean, his attributes, 71 power versus right, 69 contact. Obviously, the arm strength at 98. Durability, he doesn't get hurt. Speed is okay, 65. I mean, he's a good player to me. He's a good all-around player, but I don't know if he'll hit for average once we get him over to our team since it looks like he's struggling this season. And he's got the cold snowflake, so it means that he's kind of cold right now. So let's just see what the Dodgers would want for him. So they would want Starling Castro. Definitely not something I don't know if I'd would I'd be willing to give up starting Castro for this Puig. And then they want How Howard Armas in this trade and Remuto. So I don't think this is doable. But I mean, we'll see, man. I mean, let me know what you guys think of these trades, especially Carrasco. I mean, he is a guy that I might I might want, man. I mean, let me know. So let's hop into some uh a little bit of double a action i wanted to show you guys some trades some guys that potentially we can go after some free agents 
and you know let's just take a look one more one more i'm having fun with this let's take a look at one more and this one's gonna come in the form of billy hamilton he he uh he signed last year for one year uh, I believe he was a free agent, but he signed a one-year deal for four million. Resigned with the Reds. Let's just see what the Reds want for Billy Hamilton. So they, everybody wants Starlin Castro. So they know that we have him on the block. So they're probably pretty much, you know, give us him and we'll give you whoever you want, pretty much. And I don't know if Billy Hamilton is really worth Starlin Castro. I mean, the thing is, Billy Hamilton's got that just blazing speed. He gets on base, it's an automatic run almost because you steal second, a hit pretty much scores him. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, Billy Hamilton in our outfield, that would pretty much, I mean, it could be just a one year deal type of thing just for the rest of this year, but it would pretty much kick Leary Garcia to the infield and Lewis Brinson and Domingo Santana, Lewis Brinson would likely slide over to left field. That would be a pretty good outfield. I can't lie. So there's a bunch of guys that have expiring contracts that we could go after. But yeah, like I said, let's hop to some double A action. We got some double A action coming this way right before the draft. I want to get get a gauge for, you know, who's progressing well at, at the double A level and who's, you know, kind of standing still. So let's hop into some action. So we are starting this action out at the double A level as Eric Torrijos comes up in the top of the second inning and blasting one over the left field wall and that is some rare power displayed by now a 21 year old shortstop and he's been kind of pretty good i mean if you think about it you know he's not really a high potential guy but he's a young guy in our organization c potential at about 61 62 overall but he's been doing pretty good at the double a level pretty productive as lucas salee Gets his first hit and his second at bat at the double-A level, and he is just going to be a monster in the future. Just wait till he gets up to the MLB level. Probably won't be this season, but next season, definitely expect to see him at the MLB level. So here's Aquino coming up after the walk to Aguilla with two outs, 3-2 count. He's going to drive this one over the left fielder's glove. That one's going to hit the wall, and Aquino is going to get in with a stand-up double and drive in two runs, so that's going to be a 3-1 to one lead here for Jacksonville, and here comes uh, a pretty good player in his own right, Nelson, our third baseman, and he lines out to center field. So now Sandy Alcantara gets, uh, gets up to the plate, and he actually started this game off pitching he actually pitched pretty good. I think he pitched five innings, gave up five hits, and not too bad. I mean, he did give up a little bit more, uh, a little more earned runs than I really initially wanted. But I mean, hey, he's a young pitcher, getting better. He's he's close to seventy overall. I don't want to move him up. I was kind of expecting him to possibly make a move but it doesn't seem like he's gonna compete for a spot this season maybe next season so now back to the game fourth inning as you see howard armis gets the hit up the middle drives in a run lucas Ali comes up one more time and that one is gonna be crushed straight crushed over the right field wall and that's gonna be a home run for lucas Ali, and that is going to be I mean, just it's, it's just the potential that we see in Lucas Ali. I mean, you can just see it. It's oozing from him as he just powers that one. And he's got power to all fields. That's one thing I like about him. He's just, he's just, a. I think he's, I don't know how he's not a potential. Like, the, just the way he plays. I mean, he's just, like, amazing. As uh, we do bring in Trey Pearson, who's actually one of the guys that we drafted in this past draft. And you can see here, he's doing work, striking out guys, looking here. Gonzalez strikes out, looking one more just for the kids, striking this guy out. And Trey Pearson's doing a pretty good job pitching out on the mound. And he gets through two innings with four strikeouts as we get to the bottom of the ninth inning here. And we do get the ground out for the win. Sandy Alcantara gets the win. And... What a debut by Lucas Salee at the AA level. He goes two for five, three RBIs, a home run, so bright things to come from him. So now we jump back up to the MLB level. Bartolo Colon Jr. is caught in a situation with a save opportunity. Nick Williams at the plate, and he lines one to the right field. That's actually Tapia, 
and the next pitch he does line it to Manny Machado and we do get out of here with the victory to end May and we're kind of doing pretty well towards the end of May you'll see here coming up we actually go on to win seven straight to end the month and they were all road games so now we're ending uh the month of May and into the beginning of June almost in a draft day in a four game series versus the Phillies and we're doing pretty good here and we're still on top of the division barely holding on and now we're into another critical situation with Philly a guy on third with one out and Bartolo Colon gets the clutch grounder on that one and then he gets another guy to pop out to John Giovatella so we do fast forward a little bit here into the 12th inning as Lewis Brinson does get a hit to start out this inning and he's on second with Johnny Giovatella coming to the plate and Johnny Giovatella hits one to right field, and that one's going to drop in there as Lewis Brinson does advance to third base. And now we got guys on first and third. Domingo Santana at the plate, and he's going to hit a hard shot to right field, and that one's going to be through, and a run is going to come across the plate as Justin Bohr comes up a couple of batters later. And he gets a hard hit to the left side and that is going to score two as we take the nine to six lead here late in extras and we bring in trevor cahill we actually used our whole bullpen in this game he's the last pitcher remaining in our bullpen and he gets the line out to left field and we get out of this game with another victory and surprisingly man we're still only after going on that eight game win streak now we're still only a half game up on washington because we went eight and two in our last 10. washington actually went eight and two in their last 10 as well as if you look at the game stats you know i contribute a lot of our recent success to the promotion of gia Vitella to the starting lineup we had the same thing happen last year where we kind of played john gia Vitella and he was hitting pretty good and then eventually we started him I think it was a mistake to take him back out of the starting lineup because look at him now. He's hitting 342 after this game. He goes three for six in this game, scores twice. I mean, his his paw prints are all over this game as he just kills it. And, you know, our pitching has actually been doing pretty decent. Despagne didn't have a horrible game by any stretch, but, you know, He's actually a decent number five, bottom of the uh, rotation guy. And you can see the rest of these guys. Santana's hitting 295. Machado's hitting close to 280. And actually, Johnny G. Patel is the only guy that's hitting over 300. So you guys don't want to miss any action coming up. Let me know if you guys like any of those trades because I might be looking to just make a playoff push because we're doing pretty good now that our hitting's come around and the pitching is up done pretty well up to this point so hit subscribe hit that like button let me know who you think i should trade for should i do any of these trades should i just stand still let me know what you think so stay tuned let's go